Good evening, young Padawans. My name is Princess Leia Organa, and I am here on a diplomatic mission from Alderaan. I am looking forward to giving you some Jedi training this evening. The CH Booth Library told me that you were true Jedi on the light side who were ready to learn the ways of the Force. We'll be reading some stories tonight about true heroes across the galaxy. Now, from a galaxy far, far away, we're going to start with a story about the first time I met my brother. Do you know who my brother is? My brother, Luke Skywalker, is one of the greatest heroes this galaxy has ever known. And his mission is to bring balance to the Force. He realizes that connections to others are very important. Usually, Jedi tend to try to keep those connections separated. But my brother Luke knows that it's very important to have people in your life who love you and people that you love so that you can take care of each other and support each other, that that can be a strength to you. He understands as well that emotions are a part of life. We don't have to get rid of our emotions, but we can learn how to control them and how to be careful with them our emotions, that's how we feel. That doesn't have to make our choices for us. Jedi use their emotions for good. They use their emotions to figure out how to handle a situation to help others. Sith, on the other hand, use their anger to try to get what they want. A true Jedi never reacts in anger. Next time you feel angry, Jedi do feel angry sometimes, but when you feel angry, remember the Jedi way and choose peace and calm. Your anger helps you to notice that something is wrong and needs to be fixed, but you can use that information to make a peaceful and calm choice. That's what a Padawan trains to do. It's not easy to learn, but I know you can do it. Now, this first story we will read is called Escape from Darth Vader. Darth Vader is in my family. Do you know who Darth Vader is for me? He's my father, yes. And my brother Luke is my twin. The story starts with a big ship and a little ship. Can you find the big ship? And how about the little ship? Which one do you think is mine? Take a look. The little ship belongs to me and the big ship has Darth Vader inside. It was a time of war. Rebel spies fought the sinister empire for control of the galaxy. One of the rebels was named Princess Leia. That's me. I had been given plans for the empire's newest weapon, the Death Star. Now I was on my starship headed home to Alderaan, but I was not alone. An Imperial ship was chasing me. Now we had the plans to the Death Star because one of the men who designed the Death Star didn't want to do it. He knew that it would be a very dangerous and powerful weapon. He knew that the Empire would use the Death Star to hurt innocent people and that's never something that good people want to do. So he designed the Death Star with one flaw. And if the rebellion could get a hold of the plans of the Death Star, they could find out what that one flaw was and take it down. It was my job to ensure that those plans got to where they needed to go. There's one person that needed to have those plans and his name is Obi-Wan Kenobi. He was my only hope. On board my ship were two droids. Do you know their names? Who's this? 
R2D2. And who's this? C3PO. What is your favorite droid? My favorite droid is R2D2. There are quite a few droids across the galaxy, all different kinds of droids that do different things. Droids are basically robots that help to accomplish tasks. C-3PO is a protocol droid. It's his job to help people know what the rules are in any different planet they might be on. He also is good at translating. And we also have a droid called BB-8. Can you find BB-8? We have medical droids as well. Droids can be used for good and droids can be used for evil. Of course, the Empire has plenty of droids that they use, but I think that we have the best droids of all. C-3PO was worried. He didn't like being attacked. I don't like being attacked either. We're doomed, he said as the starship shook. There'll be no escape for the princess this time. That's what he thinks. Suddenly, a loud blast rocked the ship. It had been captured. As the droids watched, the starship's main door blasted open. Stormtroopers rushed through, swarming the ship. The stormtroopers fired their blasters. Luckily, they have terrible aim. I can't believe it. They've trained for a long time, but they must not have the force. The force definitely helps you to aim, and it's something that Luke has practiced a lot. He practiced by closing his eyes and being able to feel where different things are using the force was something that he practiced by training with his eyes closed. I think the stormtroopers sometimes seem like they're shooting with their eyes closed and without the force, but I don't know. The rebels fired back. And one by one, the rebels fell. Soon the stormtroopers were in full control of the ship. As the battle wound down, a mysterious figure emerged from the smoke. Who is it? It was Darth Vader. Darth Vader was not always scary. Darth Vader was not always on the dark side. Darth Vader began his life as a young boy named Anakin Skywalker. He was not on the dark side, he was on the light side. In fact, he had the force, the force was strong in him. And he was one of the most gifted pilots the galaxy has ever seen. He tried the dark side because he thought, he was told and he believed that the dark side would give him power to save people that he loved. It's not true. When the dark side tells you they can help, they don't mean that they will really help and they certainly won't help forever. The dark side separated him from everyone that he loved and stopped him from being able to help anyone that mattered to him. But he thought that the dark side would help. It did not. In the commotion, R2-D2 slipped away. Noticing that R2-D2 was missing, C-3PO set out to find his friend. R2-D2, where are you, he called. Elsewhere on the ship, I looked at the plans for the Death Star. I knew I had to keep them safe. If the Empire got the plans back, the rebels wouldn't stand a chance. Just then, R2-D2 appeared, and that gave me an idea. I'm not certain, but I think that R2-D2 had this idea before I did. I leaned over, and I began speaking to the droid. I was recording a message for someone who I hoped could help me and the Rebel Alliance. This is what I said. I have placed information vital to the survival of the Rebellion into the memory systems of this R2 unit. When I was done with my message, I inserted the plans for the Death Star into R2-D2. Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. I needed his help. Then... I told R2 where to go. I was just finishing my instructions when C-3PO found R2-D2. At last, he said, 
Where have you been? C-3PO pointed back at the stormtroopers. They're heading in this direction. What are we going to do? But R2-D2 wasn't listening. He turned around and zipped off toward the escape pods. I watched until I was sure R2-D2 was safe, and then, lifting my hood over my head, I crept into the shadows. There was still a chance that I could get away, too. Meanwhile, Darth Vader was speaking to one of his commanders. The Death Star plans are not in the main computer, the commander reported. That did not make Darth Vader happy. Tear this ship apart until you found those plans, he ordered, and bring me the passengers. The stormtroopers wasted no time. They had not been searching long before they spotted me. I tried to escape, but I was not fast enough. The troopers brought me to Darth Vader. I want to know what happened to the plans, he told me. I refused to speak. I, of course, was not going to tell him where the plans were. Darth Vader ordered, my, ordered his commander to take me away. He thought he would get the truth out of me, somehow. He didn't know that he was my father, and I didn't know that either. But the plans and R2-D2 were about to leave the ship. They were inside an escape pod. You're not permitted in there, C-3PO told him. This is what a protocol droid does. He knows the rules and he tells everyone to follow them. It is restricted. You'll be deactivated for sure. R2-D2 just beeped at him. Secret mission, C-3PO asked. What plans? I'm not getting in there. Just then, another explosion rocked the ship. What do you think an explosion sounds like? Can you make a good explosion sound? Ready? One, two, three. That was a good explosion sound. C-3PO hurried into the pod. I'm going to regret this, he said. The door slammed and the escape pod rocketed off into space. Do you know where the escape pod was going? It was going to a planet where my brother lived. Do you know the name of the planet? A short while later, the pod landed on a desert planet named Tatooine. The plans were safe, but the droids' adventures were just beginning. That's right. They took the plans. They found, well, they found my brother by accident. And then my brother listened to my message. He didn't know who Obi-Wan Kenobi was, but there was an old Ben Kenobi that he could find. When he found Ben Kenobi, he learned about the Force, and he joined the Rebellion. Not only did he join the Rebellion, he became a Jedi Knight. Our next story is called A Jedi You Must Become, and I'm quite sure you know who's in this story, because not everyone talks like that. A Jedi You Must Become. Now, during this story, we are going to do some hero training. You are going to get a chance to become Padawans. To become true masters of the force takes decades of practice. But you are going to begin your training today. Luke Skywalker would become one of the greatest Jedi Knights in the galaxy, but he wasn't always a powerful Jedi. In the beginning, he was just a boy, no different from any other. Luke fought bravely as a pilot for the rebellion. That's what happened after he brought the plans to Obi-Wan. He even destroyed the Death Star. Do you remember I told you there's a flaw in the Death Star? My brother was the pilot who destroyed the Death Star because he knew exactly where that flaw was and he used the force with help from Obi-Wan to aim perfectly and destroy the Death Star. Luke decided that he could best help the rebels if he trained to become a Jedi Knight. In a vision, Luke's friend Obi-Wan Kenobi said to him, you will go to the Dagobah system. There you will learn from Yoda, the Jedi Master who instructed me. Luke knew that Obi-Wan would appear to him only if his message was very important. So Luke and his droid R2-D2 flew to Dagobah right away. 
What do you know about Yoda? Is he big or is he small? Yoda is small. What color is Yoda? Yoda is green. Yoda is small, but are his ears big or small? Yoda's ears are very big. And is Yoda on the light side or the dark side? Yoda is on the light side and will always be. Dagobah was not what Luke had expected. He thought a Jedi Master would live on a beautiful, serene world, but that was not what Dagobah was like at all. The planet was wet, muggy, and crawling with bugs, critters, and wild animals. It was a swamp. It could be summed up with one word. What word would you use to describe this? A place that is wet, muggy, crawling with bugs, critters, and wild animals? What word would you use to describe a planet like that? In this book, the word he uses to describe it is gross. What are some other words that are like gross? Disgusting? Yucky? When Luke landed, his X-wing fighter sank right into the marsh water. Suddenly, Luke felt someone watching him, and he spun around, pulling out his blaster. Let's do that together. Ready? Now, you can do this sitting, or you can do this standing. Make sure you have your blaster ready, just for pretend. We're going to use our fingers as blasters. Ready? Turn around like this, and you'll be able to feel someone watching you. Ready? Here we go. Be ready to pull out your blaster. One, two, three. Spin around. Let's see who it is that's watching. Standing in front of Luke was a pale green creature with big pointy ears. You know who that is. We just described him. There he is. I am wondering, why are you here? The creature asked. I'm looking for a great warrior, Luke replied. The creature shook his head. A great warrior? Wars not make one great. Luke had to admit the creature had a point. I'm looking for a Jedi master, he explained. Oh, Jedi master, the creature said. Yoda, you seek Yoda. The creature promised to take Luke to Yoda, but first the creature stopped at his home and fed Luke dinner. With no sign of Yoda anywhere, Luke grew impatient. We're wasting our time. The creature turned away from Luke. I cannot teach him. The boy has no patience. He is not ready. Patience is something that is very important for a Jedi Knight. Can you be patient? Being patient means good at waiting. Did you have to wait for anything today? I have to wait for things all the time too. When you're patient, you wait without complaining. And Luke is much better at that now. Being patient takes practice. The next time you have to wait for something, remember your Jedi training and be calm while you wait, just like Yoda is. Yoda is always calm. Suddenly, Luke realized that this was no ordinary creature. Yoda, he said. Yoda laughed at Luke. Adventure, heh. Excitement, heh. A Jedi craves not these things. You are reckless. Luke told Yoda that he had learned so much already and he was not afraid. Finally, Yoda agreed to train him. If you could have any Jedi master to be your trainer, who would you want to have? I would choose Yoda myself. There are many great Jedi masters and my father could have been one. Luke's first test was to run through a swampy obstacle course. As Luke trained his body, Yoda helped him develop his mind. Yoda makes a good backpack, doesn't he? A Jedi uses the force for knowledge and defense, Yoda said, never for attack. 
Luke began to understand that being a Jedi was less about him and more about helping others. Part of your Jedi training is learning how to help others. Can you help others every day? Yes, of course you can. You can help others without even leaving your home. You can help others by noticing when they need something and doing it for them. You can help others by giving them a smile or by giving them a wave, asking someone how they're doing. These are small ways that you can help that really make a difference. I believe in you, young Padawan. Luke also learned to move objects with the force. One day, Luke stacked a tower of rocks with his mind while standing on his head. But as Luke placed the final rock, his X-wing began to sink deeper into the swamp. Luke lost his concentration and fell to the ground with a thud. Thinking about trying to raise his ship from the muck, Luke said to Yoda, moving stones around is one thing, but this is totally different. No, no different. You must unlearn what you have learned, Yoda said. Luke concentrated again. He knew that he would one day have to confront Darth Vader, the powerful Sith Lord. He needed to be as strong in the force as possible. Luke turned back to the sunken X-Wing and said, All right, I'll give it a try. Yoda stopped Luke saying, Do or do not. There is no try. What Yoda is saying is not to give up. When you decide that you're going to do something, that means that even though you'll have to train and practice to figure it out, you will have the patience of a Jedi and you will not give up until you learn. We're going to practice the Force now. Before we read about whether or not Luke was able to raise his X-Wing up from the swamp, I want you to practice using the Force. Using the Force requires calm and it requires concentration. That's a big word. Can you say that with me? Concentration. Very good. Being calm and concentrating means that you think about only one thing. If anything else tries to come into your head, just ignore it and only think about one thing. Okay, I want you to put your hands in front of you and I want you to think, concentrate, remember. Try to force push to push me back. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Focus, be calm. Push your hands gently and slowly forward. Hmm, it's not working. What could be missing? Hmm, perhaps closing your eyes will help you to concentrate. Sometimes a Jedi needs to do something like close their eyes when they're first learning a new skill. It helps you to not think about the things you're seeing and only focus your mind, concentrate. So close your eyes, put your hands in front of you and gently push not working yet. Focus. Focus your mind. Oh my goodness. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. It's working. Stop. Stop. Okay. Now to come back, I'm going to need to teach you force pull. Do the same thing. Concentrate. Focus your mind on one thing. And I want you to pull back like this. Close your fingers gently and pull back. Ready? Here we go. Pull back. Focus. Pull. Pull. The force is strong in you. Pull. Pull. Oh, now push. Push. Well done. Now stop. I am impressed and I am proud of you. Focusing your mind is not easy to do, but it's something that's very important for a Jedi. Luke concentrated on Yoda's words and lessons, letting the Force flow through him. The Force is something that flows through all living things. 
connecting them and penetrating them. It's something that you can connect to when you focus and calm your mind. It's okay if you aren't very good at it at first because you are patient like a Jedi, right? Slowly, the X-Wing began to rise. Luke was as surprised as R2-D2 was excited. The little droid exclaimed with his own brand of beeps and whistles. But Luke struggled with his doubts. He knew that an X-Wing was very heavy. How could he possibly manage to lift it? Slowly, the ship sank back into the swamp. Luke did not believe that he could do it. And that changes how your mind is able to focus. When you believe that you can do something, when you truly believe it, your mind is opened to be able to focus more. So believe in yourself. You can do good things in this world and you can do hard things. If someone needs you to do something hard, don't give up. Believe in yourself. Know that you can do things that are hard because you belong here with me as a Jedi Knight. Luke was sad and discouraged. I can't. It's too big. Size matters not, Yoda said. Look at me. Judge me by my size, do you? Yoda reached out with his tiny old hand and the ship began to move. Yoda concentrated. Remember that word? We learned that word. Yoda concentrated even more and the ship floated through the air until it came to rest on solid ground. I don't believe it, Luke said, astonished. That, Yoda replied, is why you fail. Sometimes amazing things are possible. I want you to believe in yourself. When you start to learn for school, whether you're learning at home or in a different building, no matter who your teacher is, I want you to believe in yourself. You can learn hard things. Sometimes life calls upon you to try something very new and different and hard. Maybe you'll feel like Luke, sad and discouraged, but you are a Jedi. You can concentrate and you can do hard things because you believe in yourself, don't you? I believe in you and my force can be strong for you and the force can be strong within you as well. Luke continued his training more determined than ever. One day, Luke saw a vision through the force. He saw his friends, Han Solo, and me, and we were in trouble. We had been captured by Darth Vader. It is the future, you see, Yoda explained. I've got to go to them, Luke insisted. He couldn't bear to think that Han and I were in danger. Luke knew that a Jedi Knight was a defender, not an attacker. Remember that. We defend, we don't attack. He acted out of protection rather than anger, remember? He could have been angry that we were in danger, but he did not act out of anger. He chose to be calm and then he made his choice. Anger leads you to dark side choices, but anger is not all bad. When anger is followed by calm and patience, anger teaches you great lessons about what needs to be fixed in the world. And then, when you choose to be calm after your anger, you can make choices that help others because that is what a Jedi Knight is called to do. Luke felt that he had come far enough in his Jedi training to make his own decisions. It was a Jedi Knight's duty to put other people ahead of himself. Luke decided to put his training on hold and go to rescue his friends. I'll return, he told Yoda. I promise. As Luke's ship took flight, Yoda wished that he had had more time to help Luke prepare. Luke's battles would not be easy, but he was good at heart. No matter where he went, the Force would be with him. Always. And no matter where you go, the Force 
will be with you always. This is Princess Leia signing off with the C.H. Booth Library and with the Rebellion. Welcome to the Rebellion, young Padawans. It's an honor to have you aboard.